Hi guys, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing How to Fight a Dragon's Fury by Cressida Cowell. This is the 12th and final book in the How to Train Your Dragon series. Um, so obviously it's going to spoil all the other books in the series, and you should totally start with book one, How to Train Your Dragon. If you haven't read these before, um, they're kind of similar to the movies, but not really, so be warned. Um, they follow Hiccup Horrendous Haddock III, who is the son of the uh, Viking chieftain Stoic the Vast, and Hiccup is not at all what you would expect a, uh, a Viking to be or a hero to be. He's very small and an unlikely hero. And so this whole series is about Hiccup and his dragon Toothless. And how they go on to, and how they um, constantly fight and surprise people and become these heroes. Yeah. Also, Book Toothless and Movie Toothless are not at all the same. Um, <laughs> Book Toothless is the small dragon, and he literally has no teeth, and he is this precious, adorable thing that needs protecting, and I love him terribly. Anyway, that's my take on Toothless, anyway. Um, so yeah. This final book, How to Fight Your Dragons, for how, how to fight your dragons. <laughs> the final book, How to Fight a Dragon's Fury, is the, you know, the big final battle of the entire series. It's the ultimate showdown between humans and dragons, um, with the possibility that they could, one or both of these species could go extinct. Um, so it's kind of a big deal. It's what the entire book series has been leading up to. Also, we see Hiccup face his enemy, Elvin the Treacherous, one last time, and it's lovely. I love how well this book ties in everything that happened over the whole series. We get a lot of even just cameos from characters from the previous books, um, and also it definitely reinforces the lessons that were taught over the entire series and like drives it home and ultimately this is about standing up for what you believe in and knowing when to fight and when not to and about how powerful love is and that it's not about romantic love either it's about it's particularly about the love between Hiccup and his dragon Toothless and it's really sweet. Basically, I just cried my way through this entire book. Um, there were tears of joy and tears of sadness and tears of anger. And there are enough parts in here that were shocking and enough twists that I didn't know what was going to happen. And I really loved this adventure. And it's definitely a fitting end to the series. Um, it totally wins five stars. Like, it's amazing and fantastic. And that is pretty much the end of the not spoilery parts of this review. So if you have not read the last book yet and you don't want to know what's happening, then see ya. I love you guys. Keep reading and totally go read this book. Um, if you have read it yet, spoilers! So this book starts off with kind of a recap of what's happened so far in the series. And the very first line of this book is the very first line of book number one, and I love it so much. Um, if you guys forgot, that line is, there were dragons when I was a boy. I also really appreciated the recap because it's been two years since I last read any of these books, let alone the previous book. So there is definitely enough filling in that having read them a while ago, I was able to like, oh yeah, I remember now that there's like these triggers and explanations um, for that. So awesome. And just in case you guys forgot, this is the story of becoming a hero the hard way. And definitely Hiccup has some hard times in this book. So this book starts off pretty, pretty dire. Um, Alvin is on the island of tomorrow. He has the king's, the 10 king's lost things that he stole from Hiccup. And he is about to be crowned King of the Wilder West, um, fulfilling this prophecy about, you know, the guy who found all the things will rule, will lead the people, the humans into battle against the dragons. So 
the stakes are really high in this book. Um, everybody thinks that Hiccup's dead. Snotlout was killed in the last, the previous book, um, wearing Hiccup's armor and stuff. So everybody saw Snotlout die, but they thought it was Hiccup. So they, none of the, you know, the Vikings all pretty much think that Hiccup's dead and that they don't really have another choice other than Alvin. Um, Kamikaze and Fishlegs do know that Hiccup's still alive, though, and they're out trying to find him, but Hiccup is stranded on the island of Hero's End. Only, um, Hiccup doesn't have his memory, so that was kind of a nice little shock. <laughs> I don't remember if that was in the last book, and I forgot, or if it isn't, but it's just like, oh crap, Hiccup doesn't know who he is, he doesn't know what he has to do. Um, he does have Woden's Fang and Hogfly, and Woden's Fang, Fang. Woden's Fang does remember and is trying to fill Hiccup in, but it's really hard to convince somebody who doesn't remember that they're a hero, that they are. Um, and they're under attack because, I mean, nothing is easy for Hiccup, so obviously he's also under attack. Um, somehow, though, Woden's Fang does convince Hiccup that he needs to go to the island of tomorrow, and he does. Hiccup does, um, except Wooden's Fang doesn't get a chance to tell him that he can't go on the island without the king's lost things, without getting attacked by the guardians of tomorrow. So Hiccup tries to go on the island without them and gets attacked by the guardians, and it's particularly bad when the dragon guardians attack him. So while Hiccup's getting attacked, he gets really desperate. It looks like he's gonna die, and he screams out without even remembering who Toothless is that I have to save Toothless, which is really sweet. And that's what kind of shocks the dragon guardians. They let him slip and stuff and Hiccup manages to get away from them. And I don't know. I love the fact that even though he doesn't know who he is or what he's doing, um, he somehow remembers Toothless, even if he doesn't. And I don't know. I really, really, really love this relationship between Toothless and Hiccup. So that was really sweet. And when Hiccup does get into like Grimbeard the Ghastly's castle and is trying to stop the proceedings, um, it's when he sees Toothless that he gets his memory back and who he is and everything. But it's, I love the relationship between the two and I love the fact that Toothless, Toothless is the thing he can't forget. I'm gonna cry during the review. Um, when Hiccup goes to like, goes to claim the throne, he's like, I'm the one who actually found the lost things. And so he has to prove it. And he goes through each of the 10 lessons that he learned finding each of those things. And it's really sweet. Um, and Hiccup comes to this realization that that was actually about finding like the education of a king and that maybe Grimbeard's not completely crazy. Um, although he did some bonkers things, definitely. And Hiccup becomes king only after he reminds the Vikings of all the stuff that he's done for them. And it's simple things, like it's nothing too heroic, but it's like these tiny little things he's done for um, each of the different Vikings, like getting the leader of the Fizzy Thugs, um, Dragon Hogfly back to him. Um, and some of the stories get completely, completely pulled out, like completely stretched out, um, like... The busy thug leader is like, but he went to Valhalla and back to get my hog fly for me. And it's really, it's funny, but it's also like about the power of stories and how these ideas kind of evolve, which is cool. Um, but anyway, Hiccup manages to remind the Vikings that he's been on their side the whole time and that he's been helping them. And... Elvin, on the other hand, can't think of one good thing that he did for anybody ever. Um, so they're kind of they're kind of opposites. And ultimately it's the dragons who get Hiccup crowned King of the Wilder West. When the druid is like, Well, I don't know which one of you really found all the things, and I'm not sure what to do, and so he asks for a sign, and then Ziggurastrica, the little king of the nano dragons. He has the nano dragons lift up toothless, so he's flying, but nobody can see the dr nano dragons from a distance. 
so they don't know what's happening, and they're just like, whoa, Toothless is fly, or <laughs> Hiccup's fly, he's been picked up by the hand of Thor himself, and it's really funny, and it's also really kind of cool that it's the dragons, like, Toothless, like, ah, Hiccup, <laughs> Hiccup is the one who manages to unite both of them. We also kind of have this plot point where after he's crowned king, he finds out that he the dragon, what they think is the dragon jewel, isn't actually the real one. It's a fake. And, um, so that's kind of a problem. So Hiccup didn't actually find all of the king's lost things before he got crowned. And also the king, the dragon jewel is really important because it holds two dragons in it. It's like this amber jewel. And one of the dragons holds a plague. And if you release that dragon, it will infect all the dragons and wipe them out because they were all get sick. Um, and that's the secret of the Dragon Jewel and why it's such a big deal about like making sure somebody who is wise has it and not just somebody who's murderous. Dragon Furious has set like everything on fire. The whole world is in flames. Um, it's complete and utter devastation. He's winding up all the dragons for this final battle and Hiccup is going to attempt to go out there and talk him out of it. Um, not because he thinks he can like fight furious um because he hopes he can reach him kind of on this intellectual and emotional level and so the whole idea of single combat and the conversations they have where it's it's mostly furious attacking <laughs> hiccup and hiccup trying to defend himself long enough to talk his way out of it um and it lasts for a while but ultimately when Furious goes to attack Hiccup, he is stopped by Toothless. Toothless jumps in front of Hiccup, and Toothless has got a scar in the same place that Furious has, the same place that Woden's Fang has, and Woden's Fang is reminded of a time when he tried to save his Hiccup from Grimbeard, and that's what changes his mind, because he remembers what love is and what it was to love Hiccup a second. It's really sweet and not only about like love furious's love for hiccup saving everybody but also toothless saving hiccup the third um because it's toothless and i love him terribly alvin being the treacherous evil person that he is enters into single combat before they're actually finished which is against the rules and seizes the dragon jewel and tries to destroy it and causes everybody to start fighting again um, in like an all-out battle war, full-on Vikings versus dragons. Um, so we do get our final battle. It happens, guys. It happens. And it's all Alvin's fault. And um, it's pretty awful. Alvin's an idiot. Um, Ultimately, the man to stop him, and he ends up dying, which is awesome, and I loved seeing Alvin die. It's totally great, because he needed to die. <laughs> um, Alvin doesn't really ever have this moment of... He never has a revelationary... Never has, like, this revelation moment where he, like, sees the errors of his ways and stuff. Um, the best we get is that he kind of gets sick of his mother... Um, telling him what to do all the time. And we also get to find out that Alvin is Fishleg's Fish Leg's father, which was one of those moments where I was like, what? And completely shocked by it. Um, and Fishlegs is completely like, no, I hate him. I don't even like him. How can he be my father? And it's a huge part of, like, Fishlegs' journey. Um, and Fishlegs ends up starting his own tribe. He's like, well, I'm not really a busy thug. I'm not really a hooligan. I'm not whatever the other tribe was. Like, there were three different tribes. He's like, I'm none of these guys. I'm actually going to start my own tribe. It's going to be the No Names, where anybody is invited, except, you know, Alvin the Treacherous, because he's evil. And it's really cool to see Fish Legs kind of stand up for himself. Um, and Alvin is completely like, ew, this little runt is my son. Gross. You should have died like you're supposed to. And it's just as evil, even in his last moments, as he was the rest of the book. The Hiccup manages to end the whole battle thing by giving this really epic speech 
um, where he tries to make peace with the dragons. And when convincing them that they should do the right thing for, like, moral reasons doesn't work, um, Hiccup manages to convince the dragons to call off the fight, if not for the right reasons, because, like, he really wants to wipe out the other person. Um, that they will never stop fighting. Like, if even if they wiped out all the Vikings, then they'd have to fight the Romans, and they'd have to fight whoever was after the Romans. And even if there's only one human left, that human would still be fighting the dragons for the sake of all the other humans that have got, died before them, and do the dragons really want to fight a perpetual war? Um, and it's... It's epic, but it's also kind of sad that, like, that's stops it. Um, Hiccup also comes up with the compromise that if by the end of his reign as king, by the time Hiccup dies, if he hasn't managed to make a world where humans and dragons can live peaceably together, then the dragons should go into hiding. And so that's what ends up happening. Hiccup tries and he creates a world without slaves and where the dragons are free and they don't really have owners. Um, and where all the Vikings are treated respectably, even if not equally. Um, that he really wants, like, this peaceful world. But when he can't accomplish that, the dragons do start going into hiding. And they hide in, you know, the Arctic and the north. And they hide in the depths of the ocean. And they go into stealth mode and just hide in plain sight. And it's... It's sad, but at least neither the humans or the dragons got wiped out completely, I guess. It was kind of the ending I knew was hap- I mean, it's kind of the ending that is hinted at at the beginning when he talks about how the dragons are hiding. Um, like, even- like, I went back and looked at the first chapter of book one and was like, oh yeah, he says that there are some dragons left, that they're dwindling in numbers and that they're hiding, but, like, they're still there. And so, this is kind of the inevitable ending we were always going to get. Um, but it's still kind of bittersweet to get it. After Hiccup convinces the dragons to stop fighting, the witch Excelsior makes one last stand against Furious and tries to fight him, and she ends up dying, but before she does, she stabs him with a poison blade, and Furious dies from the small little, what would be on us, like a needle prick. Um, but it's poison, so we get to see this this death scene where he and Hiccup kind of reconcile to each other and Hiccup really does lay out his plans about like what's going to happen and how he vows to you know always try to keep the dragon safe and to do its best um and it's really sweet and we get to see Furious call Hiccup the one that Hiccup the one whose name I love and also calling Hiccup his blood brother um and it's a really sweet ending for Furious um, but kind of sad that he didn't make it out of it, even after he had a change of heart. Um, but the witch dies, which is awesome. So both Alvin and the witch are dead. So yes, <laughs> much rejoicing over that. Um, so yeah, the epilogue's pretty bittersweet because we hear old Hiccup talking about what happened and how his kingdom went on afterwards. But he also... Toothless starts spending less and less time with him as he gets older, as Toothless misses the other dragons. And so... It's this gradual, like, the two of them going their separate ways, and we have old Hiccup waiting to see Toothless one last time before he dies. And it's really... really sad. <laughs> um... But at least they both managed to make it to the end of the series. Um, yeah. And we do get hints of what happens with, like, Kamikaze getting really jealous when all these other girls are hitting on Hiccup, the new king, and she's like, no, not gonna have that. And we have fish legs going after one of the barbarian princesses. And Hiccup trying to convince him that that's actually, like, a really bad idea and you're going to cause all kinds of problems. Like, please don't. Um, and Fish Lakes does play a huge part in Hiccup's plan to put the dragons into hiding. He has Fish Lakes and the other bards create stories and songs about 
how the dragons were only ever fictitious. And that's how part of the hiding of the dragons is convincing everyone that they don't exist. And that the Vikings, even the Vikings who grew up with the dragons are starting to forget. Like even Hiccup has moments where he forgets the dragons ever really existed. Which is really sad because it means he forgets Toothless. So like I said before, I really love this book and it is amazing and it is the best ending the series could have had and it perfectly kind of wraps up everything. There were no parts where I was like, so what happens to this? I mean, I would have rather seen Hiccup and Kamikaze have like a better ending, like that they were actually going to end up together or not. Um, mad they are together, obviously. So that's a thing. And um, it was totally an amazing ride through the whole series. So I love it so much. I really love Toothless. Um, I'm a little confused about how much, how the Dragon Furious grew so much over 100 years if Toothless doesn't grow that much. Um, but whatever. That's maybe the one, the one minor plot point is like what? Um, maybe Furious was bigger and maybe Hiccup doesn't live to be 100. Who knows? Maybe he does all that growing last, you know. I don't know, but whatever. Um, so totally loves this. Go read it if you haven't already, but hopefully you have by now that I've just spoiled the entire book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there is my review for How to Fight a Dragon's Fury. Um, I love the title, particularly because it's about Furious is anger, but like fighting it, but also how to combat it, like not necessarily to like go into battle and like defeat him, but also to like abate it, I guess. That makes sense, right? Anyway, it's perfect and lovely and wonderful and magnificent book. So peace out, guys. I love you and keep reading. Bye.